Hello everybody, it's Cheryl from Cheryl's Organic Food Forest. In this episode, I'm going to take you on a tour of my food forest during the end of winter. And it's about three days after we had a very hard freeze at night for three days in a row. Here are my soursop trees. I've been growing them from seeds uh, for about two years. And they can produce fruit between two, pardon me, between three and five years. A lot of people want to know what they taste like. Here they are now back in the greenhouse. And they taste uh, between a, a, a combination of uh, pineapple, mango, and papaya. It's a custard-like um, fruit. Here are my fava beans. They grew over seven feet tall, and they are now beginning to produce. Right here, you can see that I have some French marigolds. I have uh, sweet pepper plants and beans on those uh, fava bean stalks. And I topped off of my pepper, so they're getting uh, new leaves. Here, I planted some... Uh, broad beans, some bush type beans in my hanging uh, baskets. And you're looking at Genevieve tomatoes that I grew from seed. And that's some sugar cane growing right there. More Genevieve tomatoes and uh, society garlic as well as marigolds and sweet onions. Now I'm not really happy. Um, well, let me move on and show you some more beans in these planters. And I may have to thin them out a little bit. Um, those are some heirloom zinnias, uh, a lot of different varieties. And as you can see, the gen pardon me, the Amish paste tomatoes. If you've watched my videos before, I told you I didn't like how they started off as um, seedlings. Uh, they've been very weak, but the two in the container, I planted those first, and they're doing better. And there are more beans there. And here are all the plants that I grew from seeds that were inside my home in my grow room. And you're looking at uh, Blue Hubbard squash, Tiny Tim tomatoes, a dwarf variety, and another dwarf variety that's called um, Red Robin. I have some sunflowers growing, Washingtonian pine, I two trees up there that I started um, a year ago. Wow, I have a lot of stuff growing here. I have uh, green globe artichoke, uh, cucumbers, that's a lemon tree. Um, that I moved back into the greenhouse. Uh, it was in the corner of the greenhouse and I moved it out uh, so it can get a little bit more sun. Um, we're painting where I have some, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, gar uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, ginger. And I have two celebrity tomatoes that I uh, grew from seeds right there in the green container and one in the uh, red one right there. And I just scrolled by the um, Mexican petunias. Outside, I have uh, some, what do you call those? Elderberries, three bushes there. And I uh, shared with you guys that I had winterized my banana plants and I cut them down and they're already beginning to grow out. They're loving the sun. If you can look right there where I'm pointing and over there, um, they're going to be fine. And here's a, a garden bed. Don't laugh at it. I've got to level it off. My yard is on the slope, and I'm trying to do another bed because right there, that is the strawberry bed. Actually, I had two of them. I'll show you the spot where the other one was, and I dug up and transplanted all of those uh, strawberry crowns and put them in containers because I want to make a flower bed. Though These are my citruses. Uh, that's a uh, Mijo Satsuma, uh, uh, Improved Meyer Lemon, and two Mexican Key Limes. And these are some dwarf trees except for the uh, cherry, pardon me, is it um, black? I can't remember right now, guys. One is a Rainier and, and one is a black 
Tartarian, I believe that's how you pronounce it. And then I have three pawpaw trees. They're very small, little babies, but they've been grafted, and I'm pointing toward them. So they're going to do very well. And the rest of the plants are dwarf apples and pears. And these will be moved out off the patio into the food forest. And they have like little coasters or caddies um, on the bottom of them. will make them easier for me to move. And everything is budding out or leafing out. I'm very excited about it. And um, so this makes my collection of fruit trees over 30. Pardon me, 40 trees now. That's a peach tree there. So, um, I have like about six apple trees, four pears, two persimmons, three pawpaws, three ch two cherries, three wild plums, two mulberries, of course, all of those banana plants. Um, am I forgetting something? Did I say pear? If I didn't, I, I have about four of those. I think I said it already. And I have two fig trees that I grew from cuttings. And that's the black cherry there. And um, I have a, a nectarine. And I have some methany plums. I think I have two of those. And... Uh, well, let me just share with you that all, all these are cold crops. In this bed, I also had cabbage and cauliflower and uh, collards that went to seed. And I, you know, ate those and preserved some of them. And right here, I have a lot of different types of kale. And this has been a wonderful year as far as the winter. And I think we're going to have a big major bug problem because I only covered these uh, hoop houses with plastic for two days when we had um, freezing temperatures in November. And so we didn't have freezing temperatures that were, you know, that was uh, constant for a day or two or three. Uh, and these plants were well established, so I didn't have to really cover them. I didn't cover them at all. Here is my pomegranate tree. I forgot about that. It's beginning to show uh, that it's breaking out of dormancy. And, and by the way, I sprayed all of my trees with neem oil. That's another methany uh, plum tree. And then I have another one behind the greenhouse, and I'll show it to you. And here is a, another apple tree. Mm -hmm. And it's showing signs of, of coming out of dormancy. And that's that big gala apple. That's the one that I was really nervous about when we had the three days of a, of a hard freeze. But it, it's doing okay. And then I'm seeing life on my... Gosh, I just went blank. I can't think of the name of that tree, Magnolia. And these uh, grow boxes, the earth boxes, they um, have lemon balm, those juju, goji berries. I'm sorry, to the left. And that's a, um, I showed you in another video, that is a Lou um, juju bee. And right here is a dwarf apple. And next to it are aroni berries, and some people call them choke berries. And uh, this is where the strawberries were. And I'm making another flower bed there because with all these 40 plus trees, and that is a, a brown turkey fig that was the size of a pencil last year. And this is the first winter they went into the ground. And right here on this uh, arched bench are my noble muscadines on both sides. And I'm going to put the earth boxes up under this greenhouse here because it will make a, a nice uh, uh, something that I could put the shade cloth over those four uh, earth boxes there. And I collect rainwater, and that's what you see in those tea jugs. And over here is a uh, another apple tree. It's about eight feet tall, and one next to it in a 25-gallon pot, both of them. I'm going to allow all three of the apple trees that are real tall to go as throw as large as they are, uh, or tall as they want. Everything else will be kept at six feet. 
And I'm backing up because I forgot to show you my Concord grapevines right there by those T-posts. And back here is where I'm going to put next to the country, I'm going to put my Green Globe artichoke. And that was some um, asparagus coming up in those little containers right in front of, uh, right here, right in front of the country. That is hostas. It won't come out until it gets a little bit warmer. And then I have some, some uh, mums. And over here, I grew pencil-sized cuttings of Thompson seedless grapes. And this is what I'm going to have to work on Monday, guys, because it is out of control and I need to get it pruned right away but it has grown tremendously and here is my fuyu persimmon tree it was loaded with fruit last year but it dropped all of them because it couldn't handle it and it need, and i just planted it and it needed to concentrate on roots okay over here i have the wild plums and the mulberry trees and i just have them in a circle around this eight persimmon tree because I just want to protect it. I don't want my kids, my grandkids, running into it and knocking it off. So that's the persimmon right there and those are the wild native trees. And that's some more compost. And then I have another plum tree back here. Mm -hmm. And it's leafing out beautifully. And another tea garden a uh, bed that I made with center blocks. Actually, they're just concrete blocks. And then I'm going to probably um, pull that spinach you just looked at. And so when I was in the greenhouse earlier, I noticed even though I watered the plants today, it was 100 degrees in the greenhouse, 77 degrees outside. Those are the mimosa trees. And so I came back in to show you how um, when the uh, sun is shining, it, is, it acts as solar panels, and it really gets hot in the greenhouse. And these are those two uh, sour stop trees, and I just had a towel in here, and I just shaded it a little bit. And that's a label that I got from Amazon. So all of the trees that I'm growing by seeds or the trees that were wild, I'm making that aluminum uh, sign so that... Um, I can remember what's what. Uh, I want to thank all of you all for going on the tour with me. I know that you could be doing other things and watching other folks' video. So I want you to know that I appreciate you all very much. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Bye now.